a lot for that. Well, Axis Bank is one stock that is at a fresh 52-week high right now. And it has other smaller banks. So, company Yuko Bank now up almost 9%. But let's do a quick uh, take on what's happening in the world of commodities. Manisha Gupta is joining in. Manisha, what's the one commodity you're looking at today? Sonia, I'm looking at a sector of commodities and I say this with a bit of a heartache. You know, the commodity derivative markets in India started in 2003 and we are entering into 2023. And the whole uh, way the commodity derivative markets are handled in India, where you continue to see ban bans and suspensions in many of these agriculture commodities, is exactly what we are looking at right now as well. So what SEBI has done via a circular that came in last night, that they have extended ban in seven agriculture commodities now till December 2023. The government had banned the seven agri commodities in December 2000. 2021 for one year. So that ban was supposed to be lifted up yesterday. But instead of that, the ban has now been extended to one more year there. Well, at that time, it was said that this was being done to uh, control inflation. Remember, government took a lot of measures to ensure that the commodity prices do not surge up too much. Also remember that this is uh, festival season, wedding season, election year coming ahead as well. And this is one thing that the government would want to keep an eye on is the higher food prices. So what we have on list of the banned uh, market is soybean and soy oil. So all all uh, derivatives of soybean there, all derivatives of mustard, rice, which is non-basmati, also is on the list there. And the other commodities are wheat, gram, moong. All of these commodities continue to be under banned list there. Well, I also want to put on a screen on what year have we seen these bans come in. As I said, the commodity derivative market started in 2003. And the first ban in commodity was raw jute, which came in 2005. 2007 was another year that you saw higher food prices. Is the reason rice, wheat, tuar, urad, all of these commodities were banned or suspended from trade in derivatives in 2007. And that list just about continued in 2008 as well, where you saw soy oil and chana being added again. And it is in 2021 that you have seen these commodities being banned yet again. After 2008, in a matter of seven or eight months, these commodities were brought back, but only to be banned again and again and again. Potato was banned and it's perishable commodities. It never really came back. And we also are looking at a ban continuing for mustard, soybean, moong, crude palm oil. These were all banned in 2021. Was supposed to see come back in the, in the markets in December this year. But now the ban has been extended until 2023 there. Well, the ban, as I said, has been put in because of the inflation concerns there, the food inflation, even as it has come down, but it still continues to be to close to that maximum target of 6% is the reason the government doesn't seem to be taking chances right now with the futures trading there. Also, because India depends on imports of pulses and oil seas, that's another reason. With the rupee depreciation, you are anyways looking at higher cost of imports. Also, the belief that there is speculation in essential commodities, that is something that the government also wants to keep at bay there. But the impact clearly is not so great because there is no hedging mechanism right now for industry or for farmers for that matter. There is no reference price also available for you to see. What we are looking at is a price that is going across in WhatsApp groups. And there is no way to trade the global volatility in commodities. So various downsides to this really. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, uh, Manisha. Well, let's talk about a couple of stocks then. Sham Metallics, they completed an acquisition, actually a rather small